our previous lessons on population dynamics, we have clearly understood the meaning of population dynamics. It is a study of how and why a population changes in size, composition and structure. We further understood the meaning of population density, which refers to the number of people living in per unit area of a particular place, right? So in this lesson, we will be understanding another important aspect of population dynamics. So you must have been a part of local surveys where people have come to your place asking whether there are young children who haven't been given certain vaccines or who haven't been given polio drops. You must have experienced this, right? So such surveys are counted as local surveys. The government of India or rather the government of any country also holds such surveys on a larger scale. So as per 2021, the population of India is projected at 1.39 billion as of July 1. So what does that mean? This means that the population of India is estimated or predicted at 1.39 billion as of July 1, 2021, right? Now, from where do we get this information? Is it documented somewhere? Yes, it is. So, the population of a particular country is projected through a proper official document known as the population census. Now, the question arises, what exactly is a population census? So, population is predicted and then it is updated every 10 years or rather we could say that population is calculated every 10 years. So this is a part of the population census. So population census is an entire process of what? It's an entire process of collecting, compiling, analyzing or publishing what? Publishing economic and social data, right? So it is concerned to the economic and social data at a specific period of time to whom? So it is pertaining to all the persons of a country or a well-defined part of a country. So a local district or a particular state or just a locality, right? So here we understood that population census is basically a process in which economic as well as social data is collected of all the persons in a particular part of the country or the entire country. Just like we saw in a previous slide where the entire country was taken into consideration. The population of India was projected at 1.39 billion. So this is what is known as population census. Another important point is that population census is an official document and is updated every 10 years and we need to keep this in mind. The United Nations also predicts the population change at every two years time gap. So by this study, it helps us understand or it predicts whether the population of a particular part of the world or the entire world is going to increase or decrease over time. Right. So this is what is known as population census. Now that we have started talking about population census, we also need to know the need of talking about it. Why are we studying population census or rather why is population census important? So population census helps us understand the total population of an area. Right. Now, this does not only help us understand the size of the population, but also the composition, the structure of the population, the different groups and their interest that lie within that population. So a census can be very useful for a government in administration, planning, plotting and also how it could go about defining or formulating its policies with regard to the population that it is concerned with. Right. So population census is also helpful in demarcating constituencies or in helping in allocating representatives to the local political bodies, state legislators or to the parliament as a large. Right. So population census is a very important document that helps us understand detail about a particular population. 
now so population census does not only talk about the total population of an area but it also helps us understand the age composition or the age breakup of a particular region so population census gives us information on the age composition of the population say so for example the government wants to set up schools or wants to improvise on the educational system or educational infrastructure of the country can it go door to door asking the number of children living in the house or the number of children who are going to school or will be going to school it cannot do that especially for a country like india with such a huge population so this becomes very easy when population census plays a role here so population census helps the government and the concerned authorities to take out the required information and then work accordingly for the concerned part of the population another good example is of the covid situation so during the covid-19 situation that was unexpected and unfortunate the government had to modify its medical infrastructure as per the needs of the different age groups of the population so with the help of the population census it was easier for the government to work on the different kinds of medical facilities for the vulnerable groups of the society so population census which helps us understand the age composition of a particular population it also helps the government or the concerned authorities to work accordingly for the concerned part of the population now we were talking of the age breakup so what exactly is the age breakup or age composition of a particular population so the age composition may include children from 0 to 14 years then adults 15 to 59 years and finally aged people from 60 years and above now the children and the aged are a part of the dependent population because they are not financially independent they depend for their expenses on the productive population that is usually the adults ranging from 15 to 59 years so the productive population economically or financially support the children and the aged population so this was about the age composition of the population so so far we have understood that the population census is an important official document that helps us understand the population in details and helps us understand the age composition of the population So before we proceed with our lesson could you help me answer this question which of the following is not a part of the dependent population is it from birth to 10 years from 25 years to 40 years or from 60 years to 85 years yes we just learned that from 25 to 40 years they are part of the productive population and not the dependent population so the correct answer is 25 years to 40 years So the dependent population depend on the working population for goods and services that they require. So be it children or be it the aged, they need extra attention and care, and they depend on the working population for their goods and services. An economically productive population, on the other hand, is the working population of an economy, and it generally lies in the age group of 15 to 59 years. Now, since the productive population is the working population, so they add to the economy of the country, right? So, immigration of such productive population adds to the economy of the country. They help in the overall development of the country. However, the emigration of such productive population leads to brain draining of the country. So, productive population is the most important part of the population. So, another important aspect that we can derive from population census is the sex ratio. Now, how do we define sex ratio? It is expressed as the number of females. per 1000 males so from this map here we can understand that south asian countries like india and countries at the northern part of africa are countries where there are more number of males than females right which means that the equality between male and female population is not right it's not balanced so sex ratio helps us understand the equality that exists between male and female population of a particular country or of a particular area on the other hand countries like australia and some parts of africa and some parts of south america we can see that there are more number of females than males again there's a problem between the deliberation of rights for males and females 
However, there are certain places colored in blue which shows that there is a similar proportion of males and females in which it means that the countries are successful in maintaining the equality between the male and the female population. So, sex ratio is an important aspect that we need to understand or that helps us understand whether there is equality between male and female and whether the government needs to focus on which part of the population more. However, there are some places, particularly countries which are developing, there are discrepancy between males and females. For example, so as per the 2011 population census of India, there were 914 females per 1000 males, while the child sex ratio said that there were 914 females per 1000 males, which only means that there is inequality or discrepancy of sex ratios in countries like India. So many South Asian countries like India are places where the rights of females are not being catered to properly. And this is a concern. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one-to-one -one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5,000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.